Hey guys, Michael from Copper vs Glass. Now not too long ago I'd done a video on cheap fitness bands and whether or not they're actually worth it. Well today we're going to be using that same formula to have a look at an action camera, again to see if an action camera of this price is actually worth it or not. So let's take a look. So first off, I want to get out of the way value for money, as you get a ton of stuff with this action camera. You're going to get a waterproof housing, a handlebar slash pole mount, seven mounts, two clips, two helmet mounts, four bandages, two batteries, two tethers, one protective back door, one USB charger, one battery charging dock, one lens cloth, and also a carrying case to put all of that stuff in. And of course you're going to get the camera as well. Now if you compare that to something like the GoPro Hero 5, you're going to be paying twice, nearly three times as much for that camera, and in the packaging you're pretty much just going to get the camera itself. The fit and finish is really good for the camera itself with a really nice rubbery texture. On the front of the camera you do have the mode and also the power on button. On the right hand side you're going to have up and down to select certain aspects when you are in the actual menus, and then on the back you're going to have a 2 inch LCD screen. Now it's not touch screen and it doesn't necessarily have the best viewing angles, and as you can see from this close Close up footage here. I'm not sure what the resolution is, it doesn't say at all anywhere on Amazon, but it's not very high. On the left hand side is where you're going to find the micro USB to charge the actual camera, a mini HDMI output, and also the micro SD card slot. Now, the actual lens itself on the front of the camera is going to be a 170 degree wide angle lens to give you that really nice GoPro effect for sports and action, or just in general, if you want to use this as your everyday camera or for vlogging, this is a really good solution. Now before I go any further, I want you guys to keep in mind that at the moment this camera is available for under £50 here in the UK with a normal retail price of around £120. So do keep that in mind when we're having a look at the actual software and also when we get onto the samples as well. So as you can see here, when you actually power on the camera, it's got a really nice display. Now like I say, it's not the crispiest display in the world and it's not necessarily the best in terms of viewing angles, but it gives you an opportunity to see exactly what you are going to be looking at. Now you do also then have the mode button on the front hand side which is where you then switch between video, picture mode, which looks a bit strange with the aspect ratio, but they do actually come out looking really nice. And then you've got things like burst mode and also time lapse mode as well. So you've got a bunch of different modes to choose from, which makes it a really versatile camera. You're then going to come to the actual settings of the camera themselves, and I was actually quite surprised and pleasantly surprised by all the options that you've got. So you've got things in here like video resolution, timestamp, exposure settings to increase or decrease that, which is really awesome as well. So you can get the right lighting that you need for a specific video. You've also got settings for photo resolution, burst mode, time lapse, where you can actually choose the time of the actual lapse itself, which is awesome. Time and date, you can turn on or off sounds, have a screensaver, auto power on and off, and just in general, there's more settings than I thought there would be. In terms of video resolution, you've got 1080p at 30 frames a second, 720 at 60, and 4K at, for some reason, 10 frames a second, which is kind of useless if you ask me, but hey, it's there if you want to try and use it. In terms of the photo resolution, again, you've got a bunch of options here as well. So you've got 12 megapixels, 8 megapixels, 5, all the way down to 2 megapixels, which is still a very usable photo if you're just going to put it on things like social media. Now, I will be honest with you guys, it did take me ages to learn the layout of the menu and the settings on the actual camera itself. Sometimes buttons have multiple functions, so the mode button on the front in certain settings when you're in the menus acts as a select or a back button. So as you can see here, when you click on the up button, for instance, it then takes you into the preview for both video and also photos as well. So again, I was thinking, okay, so how do I play the video? I'll go back. So I was trying up, down, it wasn't really working all that much. I was then pressing the play button, which obviously plays the video and it took me a while to figure out that the mode button on the front is actually the back button but as you can see here you do have real-time playback which is really awesome as well so again in terms of the functionality of the actual camera itself you can't really fault it for putting in as many things as you can I just wish that it was done in a slightly better way you can also view the gallery as well so any photos that you've taken on here as well now we'll do the most recent and then you can flick back between previous photos as well and you can see here that the aspect ratio does sort itself out as I mentioned but then again I I was struggling to get back I couldn't figure out which button I had to use to actually go back to the main menu and it was the same button that I used to get into the menu so again it can take a little bit of time in terms of learning how to use all of the menus themselves once you get the hang of it it's not too bad but don't expect to use anything on the fly now it does also have Wi-Fi as well which is really awesome because you can connect it straight up to an app and use it with your mobile device 
So all you need to do is go into the settings on your Android or iOS device, go onto the Wi-Fi settings, and you actually want to then connect to the camera itself. Now you press the down button on the actual action camera itself, and then it will appear in the Wi-Fi settings as you can see here. Now you need to wait until it says that you've got no internet connection whatsoever, and I know that may sound a bit strange, but it's because it's not actually using the internet as you know it, it's just getting a stable connection between your device and the actual camera itself. So the application that you want to look for on either the App Store or on the Play Store is called EZ iCam. So you can kind of see from the screenshots and the name of the application, it's not going to be the best. And from that splash screen as you can see just there, you kind of see what you're getting yourself into. Now as you can see here, it doesn't have a picture of the camera that I'm currently using. And I did also have to press the connect button a couple of times to actually get a stable connection. And I say stable, but we'll just see what happens in a second. So as you can see here, it's now connected and the video quality is not the best. Now as I mentioned, this isn't the quality that's going to come off of the camera. And you can see that there is loads of lag and it's really juttery as well. And you can see here that when I pick it up and then put it back down again, it halts for a pretty long time. So it's not the best in terms of what it offers and it's a very bare bones application as well. So you can get access to the gallery, whether that's video or photo, using the left hand button just there. And you've got access to change it to photo mode and also back to video mode as well. And you've also got what looks like a settings button, but again, when you click on it, it doesn't really have any useful information in there at all. So yeah, it's not the best application. If I click on record just here, then it's going to start recording and it's going to save it to your device, which isn't the worst thing. It's quite good to have a really easy way to connect the two. And as you can see here, when I actually pick up the camera and start moving it around, again, there is that lag that doesn't follow through to the actual video itself. So that's not too bad. But as you can see here, the video then stops and I'm still moving my hand around as you can see in the reflection and it's not actually recording anything whatsoever. Now the application itself then just basically stops working. You can't back out of the application, you can't press any buttons, you can't even do anything with the actual camera itself. And the only way to get out of it is to press the home button, go in, clear your applications and then start again from scratch, including the reconnection process. Now one of the main points on the Amazon page is that you can connect to this camera with this application. And yeah, you can, it's a free application, it allows you to connect the camera, but it's not very good and I definitely wouldn't recommend using it at all. But getting away from the software side of things, this is actually a camera. So what we're going to be doing now is taking a look at some video and also some photo samples to see if it's actually any good and to have a look at the overall quality. Straight away guys, you can see that there are so many problems with the pictures and videos that this thing produces. Now don't get me wrong, I am fully aware that this is a budget camera and nowhere near the cost of a GoPro that does really awesome 1080p and also some really great 4K video as well but I was expecting a little bit more. Based on the specs and what it was saying on Amazon and all this sort of stuff, I thought that it was actually gonna be quite decent and something that you could use just at least every now and then. However, in my opinion, none of the video that comes out of this or actually any of the pictures are actually usable in my opinion. As you can see from the video footage, there is no image stabilization whatsoever. There's also no digital stabilization at all. So again, simply walking, as you can see here, it is very jerky and again, unusable footage. Now, don't get me wrong, if you were to put this on some sort of steady cam or on a tripod, then yes, you are gonna get some more steady footage and more stable footage, but you've still then got to deal with the actual quality itself.
Now the setup that I used was 1080p at 30 frames per second. Now the actual video size itself is 1920 by 1080, but as you can see here, it's got a very kind of muddy texture to it, really undersaturated as well. Now some of this stuff you can fix in editing software. So again, boosting saturation, maybe increasing sharpness may help every now and then, but just in general, it's not necessarily the clearest footage in the world. So again, it's not really the most usable. Now it also has some really bad shape as I mentioned previously, which again isn't necessarily the best thing in the world. And in terms of the photo quality, it's got the same traits there with the photos as well. As you can see, in my opinion, it looks as though it was taken off maybe an iPhone 3G or 3GS from back in the day, which only produces three megapixel camera pictures. Now, at the moment, we're working with way higher resolution than that on this particular camera, but the way that the actual files are saved, the bit rate, and just enjoying the overall processing, you can see that it doesn't really produce very nice pictures or very nice video. So the purpose of this video is are cheap action cameras worth it? And I would have to say that based on this experience that no, unfortunately they're not, which is a real shame because in, for instance, the smartphone market, you can spend £700 on a smartphone and get a really good experience, but then you can also spend three to £400 on a smartphone and get basically the exact same experience. But that doesn't seem to be the case with certain technology and GoPros, action cameras, etc. There's a massive difference and a massive divide between the two. Now, don't get me wrong, I know that GoPros can be quite expensive, but I would actually save up and pay to get that. If you are someone that does find yourself using an action camera or you do want to start using one, then why wouldn't you get the best version of that product available at your price range? Now, I say at your price range because you don't have to go for the GoPro Hero 5. You can get the Hero 4 Black and also the Hero 4 at discounted rates at the moment because of newer GoPros coming out, and that's only going to keep going further down the line. Eventually, when we get to something like a GoPro Hero 6 or 7, then the 5 is going to be massively discounted as well because that's just how technology works. Older technology gets cheaper and also newer technology gets cheaper because making it and getting all the parts together and things like that, the distribution, the manufacturing, all those prices go down as well. So at some stage, you will be able to get really good video quality from an action camera for around kind of £50, I would say, here in the UK. But again, that, in my opinion, is a long way off. And at the moment, if you do want a really awesome action camera then yeah just stick with the name brand go for a gopro and you're all set to go but anyway back to the samples And that is pretty much going to do it guys. Now if you want to see some more videos like this where I get cheaper versions of technology to see if it is actually any good at a given price point then let me know by hitting that like button down below and if you've got any questions or comments then again hit me up on Twitter at copper versus glass or just leave something in the comment section down below and I'll try to answer as many questions or get back to you as quick as possible. If you want to get some more great content don't forget to subscribe and also hit the notification bell so that you get the newest videos as and when I put them up on YouTube. Thanks very much for watching guys. I'm Michael and I will catch you in the next video.